Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And this time I want to talk to you about one of those common formats that we use, which is comma separated values, also known as CSV. And CSV is used all over the place, uh, especially but not only in the world of data analytics and data science. So I want to show you three different techniques for working with CSV files, one that's kind of naive uh, and will not work, and then two that do work much better. So let's say I have first.csv. I have a CSV file here that works pretty well, right? And you can see that each line is a record and each record, each line contains several fields. So each line contains four fields and those fields are separated by commas, comma separated values. I know it's a really tricky name, huh? So let's say I see this file and I wanna read it in and print it out in my Python program. And I've just been using Python for a short while. Well, I might say, oh, I know what I can do. I can use the split method. So indeed, I can say for one line in open first.csv, I can say print one line split on comma. And look at that. We actually turned each line into a list because the split method on strings returns a list of strings based on that original string. I can also do a strip here to get rid of that ending uh, new line. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? We have 12 fields. Fantastic. And it's working really great because what am I doing? I'm taking each line, I'm splitting it on comma, and I'm getting back a list and then I can print each element. So I look at this and I say, oh, this, this is pretty good. And then let's say I want to write it out again. And let's say I want to write it out instead of having the comma as the delimiter, let's say I want to write it out and have a tab as a delimiter. So I can say here something like this. I can say with open first, uh, let's do this output one.csv for writing as out file. And then I can read it in for one line open first. Then I can say not print, but output out file write. And what we can do here is say one line strip split. I can say here tab join on all of these things plus new line. So what am I going to do? I'm going to read in each line. I'm going to split each line apart on comma. I'm then going to join them back together with tabs that I'm going to write them out. And if I do that, oops, what did I not like here? Uh, uh, oh, looks like I just got things a little mixed up. Do, 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 do. Let's do this. I think that should do it. No, okay, almost. And then I'm going to start counting things. There we go. And now if I look at output one.csv, works great. Right, so I have all of my things and instead of having them with comma separation, now I have tab separation. So far, so good. And I feel really great that I've used split and join in a good way. But what if I have a slightly more complex CSV file? Let's take a look at second.csv. Now what's different about this file is that we have a field here, we have a value here that contains a comma. How is that gonna mess things up? Well, think about it. If the data contains a comma, but the values are separated with commas, split is gonna get really confused here. It's not gonna know what's inside and what's outside. Now, how does CSV delimitate this or determine this? We have double quotes around this data. So that's the way of telling the CSV system, hey, CSV system, don't take this comma inside the double quotes as a separator between fields, rather that's part of my data. But if I just barrel on ahead, I say for one line in open, second.csv, I say print one line strip split on comma, you can see now that we've got some big problems. And there's a really small, silly file. Right now on that first line, I have five fields, not four like on the rest of the lines. So it's not gonna match up, right? It's seen that comma as the delimiter. Moreover, the, the, this, data starts with double quotes and this data ends with double quotes. It did not see the double quotes as delimiters at all. So this is where things start to really break down. Now I would argue that it, I much prefer to use tabs rather than commas in separating fields because the odds of this sort of thing happening are much slimmer. That said, if you are using split and join in CSV files, this will bite you at some point and it's not gonna be good. So how can I do it instead? Well, a better solution, a much better solution, is to use the built-in CSV module. It comes with Python, it's in the standard library. And what you do is say import CSV. And it works a little strangely, or feels a little strange at first, in that it doesn't directly read the file. 
Rather, we have these two different objects. We have the CSV reader object and the CSV writer object. And the CSV reader object, you give it a read-only file. And the CSV writer object, guess what? You give it a write-only file, and then you can read from or write to a file. And it handles all this sort of stuff. So if I now say, so with open, first.csv for reading, as in file, and then I can say r equals CSV reader on in file. So I take that input file and then I hand it to CSV reader. And now I say for one line in R, print one line. And look what it's going to do. It takes each of our lines and returns a list of strings based on it. What if I want to do it with a second CSV file? Just fine. Look at that. It got rid of the double quotes and it handles the comma just fine. And if I want to write out information, oh, I can do that. Here, let's even do it here. I'm going to say, I'm going to make this a little more complex with open that. And then we'll say open, we'll say output2.csv for writing as out file. So now I'm opening two things you can do this with with. And then I'll say here, oh, equals CSV reader, say out file. And then I can say print one line. Well, I'm not going to print it. Actually, I'm going to say o.write row of one line. And write row basically says, I want to take this list of strings and write it out as an entire row. Oh, uh, write, uh, I thought it was, oh, because it's writer, not reader. There we go, much better. You actually have to use the reader for input and the writer for output. And now if I look at the new file, output2.csv, we'll see all of our data there and it handled that just fine. What if I say, no, 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 I don't want to use com um, commas, I want to use um, I want to use tabs. So delimiter equals tab. And we write that out and look at that. Now the data still has the comma in there and all the delimiters have switched to uh, tabs. So this is a great way to work with CSV for reading or for writing for basic stuff. But I'll tell you, there's a third way to do it, which is I think even better and more powerful. And it's well known to people in the data analytics and data science community, and that is to use pandas. Pandas, I always say, is sort of like having Excel inside of Python. You can do all sorts of amazing, amazing stuff. But pandas is more than that because pandas knows how to read from all sorts of formats and also write to all sorts of formats, including CSV. So I can say import pandas as PD. And then I can say PD read CSV of, and we'll say first.csv. And look what I get. I get a data frame. And a data frame is basically a two-dimensional table. And you might say, wait a second, it messed up here because it's interpreting the first line here as being headers, as being the names of the columns. Well, I can deal with that. I can just say header equals none. And if I do that, now my columns are just numbered. And of course, I can set that if I want to. And my rows are just numbered. You can set anything you want. So you can say, oh no, one of these columns is actually to be used as the index for the rows. Um, I can give names for the columns if I want. Truly easy. What if I have second, which is a little trickier, right? Well, I can do that. I can say second.csv. And we read that in just fine. What if I get here output 2.csv? Well, that's going to look kind of funny. And the reason it's going to look funny is that it assumes that I have commas as the separators. But I can change that too. I can say here sep equals backslash t for tab. And now we're back to normal stuff. And indeed, read CSV has a crazy number of options. If I do a help on PD read CSV, you're going to see it has like a crazy, crazy, crazy number of options that you can set for dealing with many, many, many different types of and flavors of CSV files. All right. And I just want to show you one last file here, which is if I look at uh, third.csv, this one actually does have uh, headers. So how can I deal with that? Well, I can just say here, you know, uh, PD read CSV of third.csv. And here it handles the headers just fine and we don't need to set anything else. All right, so these are three different ways to read in CSV files in Python. I personally am a big fan of pandas. I mean, heck, I'm working right now on a new book about pandas, pandas workout. Um, but if you're not really um, sort of experienced with pandas and data frames and the different data types you have there, then you might just want to stick with plain old CSV and the CSV module that comes with a standard library. Also, as part of the standard library, it's guaranteed to come with every installation of Python, whereas Pandas needs to be installed separately. Okay, I hope that this was helpful. If you have questions or comments about these videos, just leave them here below, or you can contact me via email or on Twitter. Don't forget that you can get free weekly articles about Python and software engineering at my uh, Better Developers newsletter. That's at betterdevelopersweekly.com. 
And I'll be back soon with many, many more videos about Python, software engineering, and other fun stuff. Thanks a lot, and I will see you soon.